Hi guys, welcome again. So in this video, I'm going to teach you the HP G4, G6 and G7 laptop schematic. Basically, this is a very important schematic where I'm going to outline the key point of this schematic that you can use to troubleshoot and isolate uh, any failure within your computer. So basically, we're gonna see some outlines, including, as you can see, the system powers. This is the, the, the important uh, part for any schematic. Always you, sh you should uh, focus on system power. As you can see here, for example, we have plus 3 volt, 5 volt always. So this is basically an S5 state. What is exactly the S or state? S5 state, S3 state, S2 state, S1, S0, etc. You can just go to my channel and you will find the video where I teach you all about laptop states and how you can use these states to troubleshoot efficiently any problem within your laptop motherboard. So here, as you can see, we have plus 0.05 volt. This voltage is for chipsets for GMCH, graphic card, and also do ICH or input output control hub. But sometimes, as you, as you know, we can find that all chipsets are integrated in just one chipset. You can find that the graphic card, the ICH, and the North Bridge are integrated in one chipset. We called it the PCH, as you can see. Here, as you can see, we have just the processor, and we have one chipset. We don't have here graphic card separated, no. So let's go to, to system power. We have CPU core, basically this is uh, the, or we call it sometimes the VCC core is the power, the main power for the CPU. Always this power is between 0 0.7 volt to 1.2 or 1.3 volts. Please, before diving into the course, we'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor for this video, PCBWay. PCBWay offers many services, ranging from PCB production and assembly to 3D printing and a variety of materials. CNC machining, sheet metals fabrication, injection molding, and more. PCBWay makes it easy to get custom parts for your project. And if you don't like to work a lot with a soldering iron, they can even assemble your PCBs for you. That's the PCB way. Now back to the video. And we have DDR3. DDR3 basically here, as you can see in page 35, always you will find page here in each block. We will find the power for the RAM, the kind of RAM here for this computer is DDR3. We have many types of RAM, including, for example, DDR4, DDR3, DDR2, DDR1, etc. So, of course, the RAM has two voltages. The main voltage, we called it the VDD voltage and VTT voltage, or voltage for terminals, okay? So for DDR3, the main voltage is 1.5 volt. For other RAMs, for example, for DDR1, the voltage, the main voltage is 2.5 volt. For DDR2, the main voltage is 1.8 volt. And the VTT is the half of 1.8 volt, means is 0.9 volt. And of course, for DDR3, I told you before, 1.5 volt and the VTT is 0.75 volt. For DDR4, the main voltage is 1.2 volt. And for DDR5, the main voltage is 1.1 volt and the VTT is 0.55 volt, okay? So here also, this voltage basically is for also for the processor. And here we have the charge, the main voltage, basically 19 volts. Usually we find 19 volts. Okay, and here we have VGA core. This is basically for the graphic card, but because here the graphic card is integrated here in this 
chipset this voltage will feed this chipset okay so here we have the processor the processor here is for is intel as you can see and here we have the pc hitch so uh, of course the bus that connect between the processor and the pc hitch we're gonna find here mini buses okay like uh, direct media interface dmi and if di sometimes we can find f is b or front side bus so excuse me here i made here an error basically the the north bridge is not is not integrated with this chipset the north bridge is here the proof is integrated with the, the processor the proof is that we have as you can see the ram slots do you see did the artery Channels is connected with the processor. Okay, when you have the RAMs connected to pro with the processor, means the the North Bridge is integrated with the processor. And basically here we have the ICH, okay, and the graphic card. Do you see the graphic cards because we have here. HDMI, CRT, and LVDS is connected with this means here we have graphic card. And because all this, as you can see, connectors and ports are connected to this means we have here ICH because basically the ICH or the input output control hub is the controller for all other ports and connectors in the motherboard including hdd or hard disk drive or of course ssd sometimes odd optical disk drive as you can see so the ich control all this so the lan port the wireless lan the keyboard controller here we have keyboard we have the fan we have the rom or we call it bios okay so we have here audio codec this is basically to, to, to control the speaker, etc. And of course, we use the ports and webcam, Bluetooth, etc. So, so when you find here, just we have a tip. When you find, for example, many of these ports are not operational, means many of these are failed, means the failure is the ICH or the input output control hub within this graphic card so how we can resolve this kind of problem by of course replacing the whole chipset okay so let's see for example one of the system power in the laptop motherboard here as you can see we have the 5 volts always and the 3.3 volt always so if you understand so just pay attention if you understand one circuit within a computer you can of course understand all other circuits because always the working principle and the component that that is used within a circuit is usually the same okay so here we have the controller or the ic okay and then we have two channels as you can see here we have the first channel to generate 3.3 volt and here also we have another channel basically to generate 5 volt so we have the control ic we have two mosfets a higher mosfets and the lower mosfets this is just for compensation and to adjust the output voltage the same here we have two mosfets okay and then we have as you can see here we have this inductor pl23 so always the inductor the reference for the inductor is l you can find l or pl okay and here we have capacitors just for filtering purposes the same for this channel also we have inductor we have capacitor this is an electrolytic capacitor or polarized capacitor and here we have ceramic capacitor the same also here okay and we have the main voltage as you can see over here we have v in this is the main voltage of course this voltage should be first filtered as you can see if we go here we have the main voltage that is passed through an inductor just adjust the voltage sometimes the inductor basically 
or usually do the inductor adjust the voltage or the current by increasing it okay and we have this ceramic capacitors or sometimes we call it pf capacitors because we find it usually in picofarad so this basically has as a purpose to smooth the current within the circuit and then as you can see v in once it is passed through this inductor and this ceramic capacitors it will be directly applied to the first mosfet okay this mosfet here we have the drain do you see we have four pins connected together it means this is the drain three pins connected together this is serves and here we have the gate so the gate always is connected with the control ic do you see here we have upper gate okay upper gate signal as you can see will control this mosfet once the gate receive the control signal from this ic so the voltage will pass to this side okay of course here we have 19 volt but here we we will get just 5 volt why because this is here the control it controls so based on the control signal the 19 volt could be change it to 5 volt or to 3 volt or to 9 volt based on the control signals and of course this mosfet as you can see here is always connected with the ground as you can see just to make some adjustment in order to get here 5 volt okay so for example let's assume that we get here 5 as you can see normally here we have 5 volt we should get here 5 volt but if we get for example 5 0.3 volt let's assume for example that we get 5.3 volt so this 5.3 volt will also be received by the phase pin over here then the control will adjust as you can see here the, the, the control signal in order to get here 5 volt so this is basically for compensation for in order to adjust to output voltage okay the voltages and the signals in general within the computer should be accurate and should be adjusted about 90 percent not like other other devices where for example for for flyback motherboards or uh, switch mode power supplies okay where we have some tolerances okay so the same for this channel also always we have the same we have vn do you see here we have vn here also we have vn the same voltage or same source of voltage and as you can see we have pf capacitors in order to smooth the voltage and then we have two mosfets it will pass through this mosfet bit of course after receiving the control signal here we have the upper gate for this mosfet and we have here the lower gate for this mosfet the same here as you can see lower gate and upper gate okay so here we, we will get three volt that will pass through this inductor and do and then will be filtered and we will get three volt so this is basically in general uh, how uh, circuits within the motherboard computer motherboard works but in the next videos i will go deeper into analyzing the circuits and i will show you of course what is the the, the component that can cause the failure and how to check this component and where to begin and how to use the troubleshooting approach efficiently okay so thank you very much and please don't forget to subscribe and like the video because your likes motivate me to create more and more useful and unique videos for you and see you in the next video